Hi everyone, I am David Elanti and this is joint work with Diego Calvanese, Julian Corman, and Simon Razniewski about rewriting uh, queries evaluated under count semantics over the DLIT boxes with number restrictions. Um, the setting is, uh, as uh, Manier said, in, as Quentin said in his previous talk, the one of ontology immediate query answering where we have a user that uh, accesses, at least it pos he poses queries over an ontology where this ontology is made of an A-box, which is a conceptual representation of a database, and uh, where the T-box is domain knowledge coming from certain application domain. Um, here in this talk, we consider the logic DL light core and minus, where essentially you have concept inclusions um, uh, of this form. So you have essentially DL light core Plus uh, you have number restrictions, but only positive ones and only on the right hand side of, uh, of the assumptions. Uh, for the semantics, uh, we use the standard one. Um, actually, we also assume a standard name assumption in our paper. And uh, here for, for the sake of the talk, sometimes we will treat interpretations as a set of atoms. Uh, now, uh, Quentin already said all of this. So this is the semant count semantics uh, introduced by COS 11 in 2015. So here we use their very same notation. So we, this is notation, which is very similar to the notation of conjunct classical conjunctive queries. Here, the body of a query is a set of atoms. And then we consider uh, a match uh, row for Q in interpretation I. It's just a mapping such that when you apply the match over the body of the query, you get a subset of the interpretation. Um, essentially, the interpretation satisfies the body. And then uh, here, an answer uh, is a pair omega K. So this is different from the interval that uh, Quentin was saying before here. We just consider the least value. So this K is, uh, is a number, uh, it's a natural number. And uh, this means that there are K matches for Q in I that agree on, uh, the, on the answer omega. So you can imagine this omega is the mapping of the distinguished or answered variables. And then this K matches uh, somehow agree with this answer. And uh, okay, by ANS QI, we do not the set of answers to Q over I. Now here, the notion of certain answers is that given a mapping omega and a knowledge base k, if k greater or equal than one is the smallest value such that omega k belongs to the answers of q i for some model i of k, then omega k is a certain answer to q over k. So this means essentially that there is no model i prime and number k prime such that uh, k pri uh, i prime is also a model of k and k prime is strictly less than uh, k. So this is what it means to be a certain answer. Um, here I have a, an example of all of this. So in T-Box, uh, for instance, we can express things like a small company has at least uh, 10 employees. And then imagine that I have explicit knowledge only about two employees, namely Alice and Bob. And uh, then I want to count the number of employees grouped by the companies. And here the answer, the certain answer would be my company 10 because I mean, under every model on the interpretation, I need to have at least 10 employees. Um, as Quentin said before, for CQs, it was already shown by Cost 11 Reuters in 2015 that uh, the problem was going to be complete. And so here we need to consider uh, restrictions. And in particular, we also consider restriction mentioned by, by, by Quentin, so that we consider the rooted queries where uh, each connected component contains uh, either a constant or an answer variable. Uh, so it's exactly the same restriction. And uh, now I introduced the setting. I can give you the motivation behind the setting. So here we, want to, we are interested in the DL light family because these logics, um, they, uh, in the classical setting at least, they have this property which is called rewritability. That means that you can take uh, the query that was issued, I guess, the ontology and translate it into a query over the original data source. This is quite, um, uh, let's say, useful in practice for practical algorithms. So you want to have some, something that can be used in practice. And also count queries are interesting because they are at the basis of any analytic tasks and also number restrictions uh, where they are nice because they allow you to encode a number of things uh, like statistics and uh, other information that cannot be captured otherwise. 
So uh, reliability, as, we, as I said, is also the key notion of ontology immediate query answering. And uh, also, as I said, uh, the certain guarantees the certain answers of a knowledge base can be retrieved by just a rewritten query over the original data source. Here, we do not treat the classical setting where you, the rewriting is in a target language, which is a first order, essentially it's first order logic, but we go slightly beyond because essentially we allow the rewriting to contain also aggregate operators such as count. So here we want to rewrite users query to SQL queries, which also can make use of aggregates. And uh, now we move towards the rewritability. So a hint that a rewriting could exist is the fact that there is a universal model. There is a model that allows you to retrieve the certain answers. This is the definition by Nicolau. And uh, uh, in Calvanese 2020, it has been shown that this, this, this logic, the light core and minus is a universal model with respect to count over connected and rooted CQs. And uh, the proof is that by showing that the cautious chase, that is the chase that does not add um, individuals blindly, let's say, uh, is uh, a universal model with respect to this problem. Um, now, the thing is that this algorithm is highly non-trivial, it's, it's very complex, and it's also not practical. Uh, I, I will show you both of the things, uh, why they are the case. So the first thing is why this is non-trivial. So imagine you have this uh, knowledge base where I have a, an individual uh, A, which belongs to class A, and this must have three P successors. And this is my input query. Here, the certain answers should be three because I have exact three P successors in the, um, in the, in the cautious chase. Now, if I here follow apply this rule, then in the cautious chase I will have, sorry, here there's a typo, this should be P, not P2. And, uh, uh, if I apply rewriting steps, so essentially I rewrite the atom P into an atom A and I get this query, then you can see that this query does have an answer over the A box because I have A of A over the A box. However, if I retrieve this match, then I need to count it twice because this can be extended into three different ways into the anonymous part of the, of the model, which is given by the cautious chase. So I give this number three is what I call the anonymous contribution. And so this, is, uh, this means that we have to create uh, partitions and um, do lots of complex things and uh, to, to ensure that this rewriting somehow is correct. Uh, the rewriting is based on, on the perfect ref and essentially you start, uh, so essentially you start from the original query and then you apply the rules, you get set of queries uh, until, uh, and you apply the rewriting rules until you reach saturation. And uh, then in the end, you can interpret all these queries that you obtain as a big union and you can evaluate this query over the A box. This is the idea of the rewriting. Uh, of course, as I said, the complication is that now we have to associate each query to the correct anonymous contribution. And now I will show you how this is done. So this is the example of the rewriting by Calvanese, HKI 2020. So uh, here, imagine we have a query uh, where I want to look for these paths that is essentially all the P1, P2 paths that start uh, with an individual in class A. If I evaluate this over the A box, this I get already an answer to, but I know that the certain answer to this query is, is six because here I have six paths that follow this structure. So what can I do? I can apply a rewriting step with respect to the second rule here. So I transform P2 into a P1. And then here I know that in the A box, I have exactly two P2 successors of this individual I1, Y1. I know it because it, it's here in the A box. So what do I do? I know that since two are already there, there is only one missing in the anonymous part. And therefore, this is why I take the count and then I subtract the two that I already have in the A box. And this is how I get a one here. But of course, here I said, I know that there are exactly two in the A box, but in practice, I do not know. The rewriting algorithm doesn't know that there are exactly two individuals in the A box, and therefore it has to try all the possibilities. So for each number in between uh, zero and, uh, and the number, and the number uh, in the number restriction, you need to try all the possibilities. You need to generate essentially a subquery for that specific case. And then here we can go onwards. We apply, uh, this is a rewriting step that essentially doing unification of the P1 atom. And then going beyond, we can uh, go one step back here to this node A. And again, by the same reasoning here, I have only one node that has exactly one P1 successor in the A box. And therefore I know that 
I have here, this, this, this node can be extended into three parts into the anonymous contribution. Uh, this is a very small example, toy example on the easiest case. Uh, um, the rewriting is more complex than this, but it already gives the, the basic intuition of it. Now, the thing is that, as, you, as I said, the number of produced rules depend on the number restriction in T-box, because here we produce one rule uh, for each number in between zero and, uh, and three and or two. And uh, the idea for this extension that we had here in the DDL uh, workshop is to use, uh, to exploit SQL function and aggregation operators to encode all these rules into one single query. So essentially, in particular, we consider count, sum, and greatest. And I will show how I do this. So here is the same example. This is the query. Here, I just changed slightly the notation. Here, I explicitly say that the count has to be stored in a variable, which is called C and T. Oh, as before, if I evaluate this query, I still get two. Actually, I would get that count is, bind, is bound to two. And then these three queries of before uh, that were uh, analyzed in this case, I can replace by this query that essentially does the following. So this exists atoms, let's say, okay, there is exactly zero successor, exactly one successor. I just go and count how many successors are there in the A-box actually. I put them in the variable Z. And then I subtract this Z to the number three before I was subtracting an exact number, a constant. Now I subtract a variable. And of course I could go negative, therefore I have to use the greatest function. And then in the end I use a sum above because there might be several uh, mappings that, uh, and I need to sum all of them. And uh, essentially this is the idea. So here if I evaluate this query, I still get a one. And now this is a reduced step as before. So I unify these two atoms into the single atom P1. And then I, now I can apply another rule with respect to the first rule here in the T box. And uh, well, by applying the same reasoning, I can replace these two subqueries into one single subquery that consider both cases at the same time. So this means that this new rewriting now does, the size of the rewriting does not depend on the numbers encoded in number restrictions. And this is nice because if the number restrictions are encoded in binary, then this means that this algorithm would be exponential in the size of the number restrictions in the T-box. And the, since these number restrictions might encode quantities that are quantities over the, actually over the data, so the, it's, it's, it will not be a very, a very practical result because they could be really huge in practice. Uh, so well, the conclusion is that answering count queries uh, is doable through the rewriting approach for connected root is CQs and over the light core and minus ontology. This result can be extended to, to root is CQs so also disconnected uh, by doing the Cartesian product essentially of the answers. And then uh, uh, as opposed to Calvanese and others, the number of subqueries generators by the R writing does not depend on the numbers occurring the number restrictions in the T-box. The thing is that, okay, we have improved over that algorithm, but this doesn't mean that, uh, that uh, we have a practical rewriting yet. I mean, the, for to assess this, uh, empirical studies are needed. And in practice, I would say um, the rewriting is still very complex because uh, now here I simplified a lot, but imagine here you have this, uh, here is very clear because you have only one concept for only one subsumption for P2, but what if you have many of them for the same uh, for the same math on P2, and then in the A box you need to do all the you have to explore all the cases, and essentially what you need to do there you have to do an atomic decomposition on so all the concepts that occur on the left hand side of these assumptions, and then explore all the situations. That is another complication of the algorithm, for instance. Uh, all of this is given by the fact that we need to compute these anonymous contributions because this um, the the paths could be extended in different ways into the anonymous part of the model. So yeah, my time is finished, uh, thank you.